Hey everyone, welcome to WebCode, where in this video we're going to learn what Stripe webhooks are. So essentially, Stripe will emit events to our server on certain actions, such as a payment being processed successfully, a new customer being created, things like that. These events contain information about the event, such as its type, and data associated with the event type. For example, right here, say a customer buys something, so they buy something using Stripe. What this will do is it will send an event to our server over here, which could be running Express, and then this event will contain information. So in this instance, they bought something. It'll contain information about who bought it, what they bought, product information, and that will all be sent to our server. And then we can then extract this information and do what we want with it. So we could send an email to that user saying thank you. Uh, we could add some information to a Postgres database or whatever we wanted to do. So essentially webhooks are a way for Stripe to communicate with our server when certain events happen. And specifically, a Stripe webhook is an HTTP endpoint that receives events from Stripe. So back to this diagram, a customer buys something with Stripe. Stripe will then send a request, specifically a post request, to a route on our server. So in this instance, it would be a post request to my webhook, which you can actually see right here, which I'll be going over soon. But before we go over that, let's talk about how we can actually create a webhook. And so we can create a webhook in the Stripe dashboard. So make sure you have a Stripe account and everything. And we go to the Stripe dashboard, and then we can go to webhooks. And when we are on this page, what you can do is you can click add endpoint, and then we can fill in the endpoint URL. So the location, which for me is my webhook, we can give it a description, and then we can select whatever events. So say we want um, account, things related to checkout, uh, customers. So we can add all sorts of different events to listen for. However, another option we have, so I'm not gonna be using that for this demonstration, Instead, we're gonna be using Stripe CLI. And so the Stripe CLI helps us build and test a Stripe integration from the terminal. This includes securely testing the webhooks we have created. And the Stripe CLI can be installed following the directions in this URL, which I'll paste in the description, but essentially it's a great way to help with testing. And we can follow, if we scroll down, we have installation, and there are different ways on how to install this CLI, and it's pretty straightforward. But after Stripe CLI has been downloaded, open up a terminal window, and if we run Stripe-V, we can see the version we're running and ensure that it's been downloaded successfully. And the next thing we need to do is run Stripe login. And after we've done this, we will see a pairing code right here. What we want to do is then press enter, and that will take us to a page on Stripe, where if we click allow access, it'll essentially pair Stripe with our CLI. So if we go back to our terminal now, we can see that we have been configured or paired with Stripe. So now essentially we can start working with the Stripe CLI. And what we want it to do is work with webhooks. And we can do this with the command Stripe listen. So what I'm gonna do is paste in Stripe listen and forward to localhost 6789 and my webhook. So that's essentially where Stripe will forward its events. So if we click enter, we can see that we're ready and then we have something right here called a webhook signing secret. And essentially, events sent by Stripe are signed to avoid replay attacks. And therefore, the webhook secret is sensitive and should be kept out of view of the public. And this is how Stripe defends against these replay attacks. But essentially, what you want to do is just paste that in somewhere in the code for a Stripe webhook secret. And we'll go over more of this in a second. But now what I want to do is go over the code that I have right here. So from the terminal, we saw that we have, let me actually bring this back over. We are listening on localhost 6789 and my webhook, which is this route that I've created right here using Express. And essentially now, whenever Stripe receives an event, it will forward it to this route as a post request. And what it does is it will send something called a Stripe signature in the request headers. And we can then use that signature in the Stripe webhook secret to construct the event. And essentially this signature right here is to verify that the source of the webhook request was Stripe. So it prevents essentially fake payloads. And then after that, we have all sorts of customer types or customer event types, so, or just event types. So if I enter a string here, we can see all these different events. And the one we're specifically listening out for is customer created. And if that's true, then we're gonna use the Stripe API to retrieve this customer and then log it out. However, note that the customer created information will most likely be inside the event already. So we can actually show that if I log out here, event received 
and then just log out the event. Now we'll be able to see it here. But essentially, after all that, we just retrieve the customer, print out their information, return a 200, and if there's an error, so an error constructing the event or anything, we will return a 400. And one other important thing to note is right here, this actually needs to be express raw and then type application.json. And this is because Stripe requires the webhook payload to be a string or buffer. And this express.raw middleware parses request payloads and turns them into a buffer. So we make sure we run this middleware before running this one. But now that we have Stripe listening to forward events and we have our event handler up and running, all we need to do is start our server. And we can see our server is running on port 6789, which is where Stripe is forwarding events. So all we need to do now is construct an event. And I'm gonna open up another terminal to do this, put it up here. And what we are looking out for is a customer created event. So if we, the way we can trigger this event is of course you could be in the Stripe dashboard and create one manually there, or easier in an easier way, you could just use the Stripe trigger command. If we send this, we can see that we have hit our endpoint. So essentially triggering this command will cause Stripe to create a customer and then it will forward this event to our server right here. And so if we look at the logs, we can see our event has been received with the ID and the data is this newly created customer. So you could work with all this information in here, but essentially what we do also is we use the customer ID, which is inside event data object and this ID right here. And then we use the Stripe API to retrieve that customer. But of course you can do whatever you want with all this data. And if we look back in our console over here, we can see our response from our express server. So we're sending back a 200. And so of course we can publish whatever kind of event we wanted to. So say instead of customer created, we do customer deleted. That'll send this event and it logs through here and we get unhandled event type because we're not handling that. But we can see the event right here and the information that was published. And so after doing all this, if you, we go to our Stripe dashboard and look at our customers, we can see these customers being created in here. And specifically it will say created by Stripe CLI. But this is all it really is for webhooks. It's just a way for us to handle data that Stripe sends to us after a certain event has happened. So if someone buys something, we want to be able to update our own stuff on our server. But that's all there is to it. Um, if you like this video, please consider downloading my Chrome extension called Witceptor. Link is in the description. Besides that, if you have any questions, leave, leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.